Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a multi-element airfoil. So as you can see on the screen, um, this will be the result of today's tutorial. Um, this is the velocity field for a multi-element airfoil. Here is sort of, these are all of the same profile, NACA0012. This uh, middle section is the main wing. Uh, this is what's called a slat, and this is what's called a flap. Um, this configuration uh, gives you uh, extremely high maximum lift coefficient and it's used on pretty much every uh, commercial aircraft for takeoff and landing. Um, usually the slats especially and the flap as well are um, of a more intricate cambered shape um, that usually wouldn't stand on as a wing, wing shape on its own but specialized for their purpose as a slat or a flap. Um, so yeah, let's get into uh, the code here. You can find all of the code in the link in the description. Uh, it's a GitHub repo. The case once you've cloned it, the case directory contains all the open foam configuration files. Clean script um, restarts your simulation, removes all generated files. Uh, mesh contains the gmesh scripts necessary to uh, produce the, the simulation domain in gmesh with gmesh and the run script is all you need to run to get a result. So you can see we generate the uh, mesh with gmesh, we convert it using an open foam standard utility called gmesh to foam. Um, <coughs> We map the names, the boundary con boundary names we've defined in GMesh to the physical boundary types in Open Foam, and finally we run the incompressible steady state flow solver, Simple Foam. So let's get into the mesh. Um, this is similar to my tandem wing simulation, except I've added um, the differentiation of chord sizes in the parameters. So I'll just go over the parameters again. These are parameters common to all of the airfoils. The point count um, used in the B spline. Um, so the parameter here is a NACA 00 and then your thickness parameter. So uh, a number, if you input 12, that means a 12% a maximum thickness uh, relative to the chord. Um, and the this is sort of the grid cell size on the airfoil. The smaller um, it is, the finer your grid near the airfoil, and the longer it would take to run the simulation. Um, oh, and right, the the point count um, is pretty much just the resolution of. Um, so the NACA 00XX is determined by a formula. You can look it up on Wikipedia, and the point count gives you the resolution in that formula with which we make points to apply a B-spline to. And so this is where you specify the parameters for each individual airfoil, each of the elements. You can make it a 7-element wing or 10-element wing, as long as you increase airfoil count and you make sure that none of them overlap. This is the angle of attack of each element. Um, in this case, notice that I've defined the main one to be the last in the last slot because um, for each airfoil, it's first created with a leading edge at zero zero. Um, actually, that yeah. So actually, that's not true. I think yeah, you could you could order it any way you want, um, but I just chose to do. I'm just. For some reason, just cho for just randomly chose to do the main element for the last, um, and these are the chords for each element. So we saw that the slat, the front piece, was the smallest, 0.2. The flap, the back piece, was the sort of middle size, 0.3. And then, of course, we have the main wing, which is a chord of one meter, and uh, respectively, these are the x and y coordinates of the leading edge. And so the AOA uh, rotates the airfoil points around the leading edge. Okay, um, so we'll just 
take a look at the mesh first. Probably should have done that first. Here's the domain, uh, the inlet, top and bottom wind tunnel walls, and the outlet. And if we zoom in here, we can see these three elements uh, meshed. You can you notice the grid resolution is, is very coarse. Uh, I did that just for speed's sake. Um, but if you want an accurate simulation, you probably want a higher, higher resolution there. You can see this flap here, main wing, and slat. Uh, I'm sorry, slat and then flap. But um, you could see, uh, so in the script, I actually construct uh, a normal line here, and then from here, I go around and wrap around a B spline, uh, and then do another line here. I think the reason why I did make three lines instead of just one B spline from start to finish is that Open uh, GMesh has problems if you do a B spline with the same start and end point. And you could see that uh, the B spline matches the points uh, pretty well. Uh, but you can see there's some deviation, at, a tiny deviation at the leading edge here. Um, so if you want a closer sort of uh, match, then you might want to put more B-spline points up front. And uh, yes, it looks like there's much less deviation here because I've used the same number of uh, points and it could just gets more concentrated. Um, so but of course your grid resolution will ultimately dictate the final sort of shape. You can see here that due to our coarse grid cell size we have this like s facet here. Um, so yeah that's it for the mesh. Um, we can look at the script briefly. Um, it's actually pretty similar to the tandem wing simulation. We we go through each airfoil and create them, collect all the loops, uh, and then use and then create the wind tunnel and then have the wind tunnel be the outside loop and then of course list all the inner loops which are our airfoil elements and we get a surface defined to mesh the region between the airfoil loops and the wind tunnel boundaries as you saw. And then finally we extrude it just a 2D with a cell cell thickness of 0.1, it's pretty arbitrary. Um, and then finally we name the boundaries. Um, so here we have the outlet, the inlet, oops, uh, the wind tunnel walls, uh, and just some calculation here to grab all of the airfoil surfaces, depending on the number of, uh, depending on airfoil count that you defined in the parameters, and then front and back, which will be empty because this is a 2D simulation. And of course the final volume, to which you can give it any name you please. You just need to define it. Um, so that's it for the mesh. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the configuration files um, for the open foam configuration files. As you can see, you know, we've, we've set the right in system control dict to write every 100 iterations and of course write the final converged iteration which in this case was 603. Um, if you take a look at so new, new T and new tilde of course pertain to the turbulence model. This will change if you use K epsilon turbulence model you'll have boundary conditions for K and epsilon. But for every incompressible flow simulation, you will have P and U. So this is P. Um, I'm just using the free stream pressure boundary condition. Um, I've been kind of debating whether a zero gradient more might be more appropriate for the outlet, but uh, not too sure. Um, but in any case, it's easily changeable. Uh, front and back is empty because it's 2D simulation. And of course, walls and airfoils have zero gradient pressure boundary condition. And if we take a look at the velocity, of course for the walls airfoil we have no slip, which means zero. Same as if you said type fixed value value zero. And empty for the, because it's 2D for the front and back, and uh, of course another free stream boundary condition. And again, outlet, we might, we might want to say uh, uh, zero gradient, but I'm not too sure about that. But it seems to work with the current settings. 
Um, so if we go to constant, it just contains uh, material properties. You can see density, dynamic, or kinematic viscosity. I always forget which one it is. Uh, and then the turbulence model selection. And yeah, I think that's uh, that's it for. We can take a look at the change dictionary dict, which is used directly in our run script. Um, we can see everything's a patch except for the walls. Open foam has a physical type wall for that, and the front and back is empty. Um, and the solver configuration is pretty standard, which you'd find in a typical Open foam standard tutorial. Um, so we'll leave that be. Um, and so I believe that's that sums it up. Uh, if you have any questions, um, or I guess we can take a look real quick at the results again. Um, yeah, so um, from the output, I saw that the, of course, this is a coarse simulation. This is a coarse grid, so we should take the resulting force coefficient, lift coefficient that's computed with a grain of salt, but um, the lift coefficient computed for this configuration was 1.16 about, which is almost three times. Um, so the, the main airfoil, as you might remember, is set at four degrees angle of attack. And according to thin airfoil theory, which is accurate for low angles of attack, we should have a lift coefficient of about 0.4, I believe, ar around 0.4. Um, which you compute with two, two times pi times the angle of attack in radians. Um, but this one has a lift coefficient of about 1.6. So we've amplified the lift coefficient just by the addition of these smaller elements by almost three at this angle of attack. And remember, this is this is a coarse mesh, so, you know. But still, uh, we, ha we see some large improvement, even though um, you can see that there's a down force here on this front um, uh, slat. Um, this flap is contributing lift in itself, but but of course you can't get the full picture unless you combine the interaction of all three elements. And what appears to be happening is that um, you just sort of induce a uh, induce a flow that an airfoil at a higher angle than a normal airfoil at a high angle of attack might have with these elements here. So multi-element airfoils are really interesting. I think like uh, global optimization of multi-element airfoils is still a hard problem that's sort of unsolved. And uh, it's um, pretty neat to be able to, you know, test ideas out with, uh, with CFD. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's, uh, well, for a final thing, I guess I'll just uh, try to put out the streamlines here. Um, so I press the stream tracer tool and it you can set down a line of seed points as I've shown in my other videos and you just say control P twice for each point of the line and you get the computed streamlines. Now let me change the color here. Okay. Let's refine that a little bit. 100 lines, let's say. Yes, yeah, so you can see the airflow here. We've got the stagnation points here at the leading edge, and then, yeah. So um, this is a pretty basic, you know, course simulation. Um, if you want more accurate results, you definitely want to use a higher grade resolution. Um, but yeah, this sort of is serves as a useful starting point, I would hope. Um, so I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.